So I've been asked by a few people to uh, upload a new video, uh, a little bit of an updated one, um, considering that my last video was done in 2009 with a different van. And uh, so yeah, hopefully this answers any questions um, that anyone might have been confused with my last video, which was pretty brief. So the first thing that I usually do when I get in the van, obviously I close the door, uh, but I typically uh, lean forward and just try to uh, try to trigger any spasms in my legs and try to get anything out in my arms because I just want to make sure that uh, everything will be okay for the next 40 to 45 minutes before I typically have to lean forward again and do it all over again. Now I need to uh, line my chair up because there's an automatic lock on the floor um, that my chair bolts into. There's a little bolt hanging attached to the frame so it locks in automatically. Uh, the screen that I'm touching is all touch screen, you capacitive know, touch, so I can start the ignition and control all the other Please controls in the van, the specifically through that screen. Display. I'm obviously only able to, to do that when I'm not open. driving because when I am driving, uh, my hand is yes. preoccupied with the joystick. I am now verifying your control of the gas brake functions. Please manually operate so the every time I start up the van, uh, the, gas the system does a, a backup system check to make sure that all of the actuators and the servo motors are functioning your properly. Of the so I just need functions. to uh, really quickly uh, check the gas in the brake and the side to side, and if they're all working properly, uh, it lets me continue. And now I just realized that I left my Bluetooth on, so this is why I'm scrambling to turn my phone off, uh, because I don't want YouTube to uh, kick this video off the internet for copyright infringement or something silly like that. But I like my Bluetooth because I can easily access my entire music library, uh, specifically through my phone. So what I'm putting on now is uh, just a pretty standard chest strap. I had it uh, specially designed uh, when I had my chair modified a few years ago. Um, and it's just got a standard D-loop. It's actually probably the most difficult thing uh, when it comes to driving because I, it takes me forever to get it through the hole and to straighten it out. But eventually uh, I get my thumb through it and across my chest and that sort of prevents me from doing a face plant on the steering wheel, which is kind of nice. And right now I'm just stretching my arm out one more time just to make sure there's no, uh, there's no more spasms hiding in there somewhere. Um, I just reach down again because I felt one sort of on the side of my tricep. Reverse. Please confirm. Reverse. Reverse. Reverse confirmed. So uh, all of my secondary controls, as you can see, are voice activated. So I can control the reverse, drive, neutral, um, etc. through voice. I can also control my blinkers and the wipers and all of the other controls through my voice. Um, but I really primarily just use my voice for the reverse and drive um, tools. Um, the voice activation software, it's, it's okay. It's not perfect. Um, if you'll look back in a minute, um, just to the left of my head, um, you'll see a little blue button. I use the blue button for all of the other controls. Drive. Please confirm. Drive. 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 Confirmed. 
So that little blue button just to the left of my head, I'm just going to tap it once right here and you'll hear the beep um, and that has indicated that I've activated the uh, left blinker and now if I was to hold that button down and it would beep twice, um, that would activate the right blinker. So that specific um, device is called a Digitone button. Um, I just found that the voice activation software just really wasn't accurate and it got to the point where I uh, I just wasn't even signaling when I was going out sometimes. So I had that installed uh, last summer uh, with all of uh, the other uh, driving controls when I switched over um, and I bought this new van. So uh, my accident happened in 2003. And uh, at the time, I, I was pretty convinced that I would be, um, I'd be stuck with people driving me around for the rest of my life, and, and I'd essentially be a passenger. Um, my first van, uh, I had, it was a, a pretty old um, Ford uh, E350 extended with uh, the high roof raised, and so I had to, I was stuck in the back, and I really could barely even see out the windows which was incredibly annoying because I could never really see where we were going and I was just looking at the road um, in front of us and so that was pretty irritating and then, and then uh, in 2007, early 2008 um, I was doing a bunch of research on my own and which is always the best kind of research because that's when you find out the most kind of stuff and I found this company uh, in the States um, which is EMC, stands for Electronic Mobility Controls. Um, so EMC, their main head office, um, I believe, is in Augusta, Maine. Um, but the service plant for the, the joystick and all of that is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, so anyway, so I found I found these guys, and they had they had released. Uh, a previous system uh, under the same name, which is AVIT, A-E-V-I-T, and it stands for Advanced Electronic Vehicle Interface Technology. And uh, they had released um, a, a previous system, I believe it was in the mid-90s, um, and it was okay, it just it didn't have a lot of the more up-to-date stuff, um, specifically that uh, touch screen that I was using. and none of the voice software was available and it just it wasn't as good as this so um, I found that out that they were releasing this new version uh, which was Avid 2.0 and they released that um, in mid to late 2008 so I um, jumped on board almost immediately and purchased uh, these electronics in uh, mid 2008 and after uh, a long installation process as well as attempting to track down a van which was also the difficult part about the installation because I had to um, get a van imported from California from uh, NorCal Mobility because in Canada even though it's such a lovely, lovely country um, there's some regulation where they can only drop the floor about six inches which is close to being enough but it didn't give me enough headroom um, so in the States you can drop them up to 9 inches. Um, so I had to import a van from NorCal, and which was the, the large white um, Ford E250, which some people might have seen in my previous video. Um, but then I quickly realized that the van was enormous, and even though it was nice to be above a lot of other people and being able to see over traffic, it also uh, was difficult to find decent parking spots, especially when you have to get in and out on the right-hand side. Um, there was so many occasions when people would park beside me and I was essentially trapped um, and I'd have to wait for them to come out. So, um, oh, and they also the big thing was I purchased a new house last year and I was not able to pull into my garage and park. Um, which was really nice, especially during the winter, because I also can't clear the van off with the snow. So if I'm in my garage, it makes my life a little bit easier, um, which is precisely why I got this minivan. Plus, it's a lot easier to control and not a lot nicer to drive. 
And it looks a lot nicer too, I think, but that's not important. overly cliche, but in many ways, uh, getting these hand controls and the electronics in this van, uh, it has really changed my life. I, I uh, don't have to rely on city transportation, or I don't have to rely on trying to track down other people to drive me around. Um, I can literally just go out my front door and I can go wherever I want. Um, it, it's, it's really hard to put to words uh, getting that freedom back. I had my license before my accident, um, so just um, being able to get that just small piece of freedom, uh, it's really, it's hard to explain how awesome that is. The hand controls did take some time to get used to. They're extremely sensitive, and for the first month or so after driving them, I, I didn't trust myself, and I don't think some of my passengers trusted me either. So at first it might look like uh, it's not going to happen, and that it's going to be impossible to figure out the sensitivity. But uh, just like anything new, and learning how to do something new, it just it really was just a matter of time. Um, before I figured it out and uh, was able to drive without a problem at all. Park. Please confirm. Park. 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 Confirmed. I have detected a loss So just of like with the startup, uh, just to turn the van off, it's just uh, I can do that all through the touch screen. And that button I just hit on the control panel, that unlocked uh, my chair uh, from the easy lock mechanism on the ground. Uh, so if before, if I wouldn't touch that, I wouldn't be able to move. And then I just use the remote for the door. I usually just actually stick it in my mouth and just press down the button because those little tiny buttons on the remotes are really tricky for me to open. Um, sometimes it takes time, but it works. Ta-da! <laughs>